Hi, and welcome to DC Super Sons. I'm Dan. I'm Jake. No, I'm not. We know that's a <laughs> lie. Dan and Jake are in jail, those little fuckers. Yeah, it's finally happened, you know? I mean, we all knew it was going to happen, but it's just... You know, it, the, the streets just feel safer now. I mean... There was, it's, you're right. It was only a matter of time. Those guys just keep running around, messing up the whole entire cosmic balance of the universe, and I'm really surprised that they weren't caught a lot sooner. I mean, the, there are many crimes that, you know, should be thrown in jail for. You know, theft, ruining the cosmic balance, jaywalking, you know. I think, I think it's that will finally did them in, but hey-ho. I heard that Dan stole somebody's sandwich. That, that does sound both like him and very much a crime. I don't know where we're going with this bit. <laughs> I don't think we know where any of us is going. Anyway, we are here to help explain some of why you should get into some DC stuff, because DC actually has some good stuff going on, and it's really cool. So whether you're a new fan or an old fan who is inevitably going to come on and say, hey, Chris, you're a dumbass. Here's some things you were wrong about. We just want to have some fun kind of talking to you about the season premiere of season six of the CW TV show Flash. Are we talking about the season premiere of season six? Because I thought we were talking about the season premiere of season one. Let me look at his email again. Okay. I thought it was six. Because he said the pilot, I think. Did he? You said the first episode of the show. You guys don't have all day in the booth, you know. I have other auditions to come in, and, and you know, if you guys want to do this whole thing and take over for Dan and Jake, you got to get a little more serious about your organizational skills. Oh, well, we're here to talk about the pilot episode of Flash. Starting well. This is going to be a ton of fun. Flash is somebody that I didn't really know a lot about going into this TV show. So for good or bad, this is what I think of when I think of Flash. Yeah, I um, I have never really been a comics person. Um, oh, I just realized I haven't introduced myself. Hi, I'm Finn. Um, I'm from Britain. Uh, but no, so I'd, I'd never really been a comics person. Like... I'd read comics, but I hadn't got massively into them. I'd never really read a deep... Like, I knew Batman and I knew Superman and stuff like that, but I'd never really read any DC. And then, um... Oh, it was probably... It was been like, 2015? I was on a plane. Um... And... It, because it was, like, a long flight... I think it was a flight to China or something like that. Um... Uh, there was a TV, uh, you know, on the back of the seat, and uh, there were some English shows and stuff like that. And there was the first episode of The Flash, and I was like, okay, I'm bored. This flight's going to take a while, so I'll check this out. And so, yeah, this, this sort of defined The Flash in my head and defined a lot of DC Comics as a whole. And then I'm Chris. I have a podcast called Play Comics where I look at video games based on comic properties and how well they stick to that source material. And a lot of my getting into comic things growing up was through the video games. So I didn't read a lot of comics because that was would have been a ton of stuff to move with. And my dad was military, so moving a lot was just something that I didn't want to carry around a bunch of comics all the time. And I'm old enough to where digital was not an option. So for me, I didn't really start reading any comics until I got to college and I knew that I wasn't going to be moving around all the time. So what I knew about comic characters was what was on TV shows, what was in the few movies that were out at the time and what I could pick up from the video games. So for me, I mean, this is Barry Allen Flash going into this i only knew that there were different flashes because there were some different flashes on some of the cartoons like the wonderful uh, justice league and justice league unlimited so uh 
in the first episode of The Flash, uh, obviously it was a spin-off of uh, Arrow, which was a show that came before it, um, and it has uh, stars uh, Grant Gustin, uh, who I think was known for Glee. He's probably known for some other things, but I knew him from Glee uh, as Barry Allen, which is, looking back, it probably makes sense, but the jump in my head was a strange one. Uh, but he's sort of, when I see Grant Gustin, I can only see Barry Allen now. It's very strange. I'm the same way there, and seeing anybody else's Barry is just strange to me, too. Yeah. Like watching the um, uh, the Justice League film was very odd because I obviously it was just a different guy, and I was like, I've never seen... I've only ever seen one person play Barry Allen, and that is Grant Gustin, so it was a strange thing watching it. But no, uh, do you want to start talking about the episode? Let's do it. Uh, okay, so first off, I have a, I have a whole few pages of notes, and the uh, the first the first thing I've noted down is the um, gospel theme kind of slaps, which um is referring to the you know the sort of the, it's the Flash theme with the sort of like in the background. I don't know why I've always loved that. It's an excellent little piece. Um, but yeah, that's the first note. Uh, should we just give an overview of the plot line of the first episode? Let's go for it. Okay, so, uh, episode begins, uh, and we have Barry, who, uh, is a CSI for Central City Police, uh, talking about his youth, uh, and his childhood in which his mother, Nora, uh, is killed by this man inside a yellow blur. Um, and his father's into prison. Uh, and then Barry and his best friend, sister, love interest? It's weird. Um, attend uh, a sort of announcement press conference unveiling of this particle accelerator built by Harrison Wells, who I, I talked for ages about how much I love Harrison Wells, um, by, uh, by Star, Star Labs. Um, and at the same time, Iris's dad, Barry's, not stepfather, but like a, adopted father after his father left prison, uh, Joe West, uh, and his partner, find Clyde and Mark Marden. Uh, and Clyde and his brother escape on a plane that they just happen to have, uh, and then the path accelerator explodes, uh, crashes the plane, and Barry's struck by lightning. In a very dramatic scene, it's, it, I was re-watching it, it's, it's a brilliant scene. Uh, but yeah. Then, nine months later, Barry wakes up from a coma uh, in Star Labs and meets Caitlin Snow, Cisco Ramon, and Harrison Wells, who has wound up in a wheelchair after the explosion. Uh, and they sort of explain what's going on. Uh, and Barry is just not interested, he leaves uh, to go see Iris. But then he gets a super, he gets super speed and just runs everywhere screaming for a bit, which is, you know, a great little scene. Um, and then Clyde Marden turns back up and he has weather powers. I have written in my notes in capital letters, weather wizard baby. Very exciting. Uh, and Barry tries to stop him. Doesn't because he doesn't know how his powers work yet. Um, he's able to identify this is Clyde Marden. He has weather powers, uh, but no one believes him. Uh, Barry talks to the the team at Star Labs, and they 
explained that the accelerator gave lots of people powers instead of just Barry, uh, which they called metahumans. Barry uh, feels hurt at being betrayed by this. Well, not really betrayed, but like not explained these things, and so goes to our. Uh, Goes to Starling City to talk to the Arrow, just so you know it's you know it's you know it's linked because they had to put the Arrow in there, and he just gives a monologue about heroism, and then Barry comes back, gets trained by Kayla and Cisco, gets given a suit like the Flash suit they just have lying around. I think they say it's for firefighters. They just have it, um, and Joe and his new partner. Uh, Eddie Thorne, which is not relevant at all. Eddie Thorne, nothing happens to him, don't worry about Eddie Thorne. Um, find Marden. Barry turns up. Fights Marden. Marden turns into a hurricane. And then Barry pulls a whole, whole Superman move and runs the other way. And manages to stop him. There's a confrontation, there's like screaming. And then Joe kills Clyde, um, Clyde Marden before Marden can kill Barry with his weather powers. And then Joe says he's sorry for not believing him about the powers, you know, how it goes. And Barry's all like, oh, we'll help people. Um, so that's all very well and good. And then at the end, um, Harrison Wells, he goes in a secret little room and he he, it turns out he can walk, you know, even though he said he was wheelchair bound. Then he looks at a newspaper from 2024, which is five years away now, that's wild. But at the time it was ten years away. Um, from 2024, that just says, Flash missing, vanishes in crisis. Um, and who knows what that, that's about, you know? Yeah, that's not important at all. At all. Not yeah, at all. You know, never comes back. Uh, just dangling plot threads yeah. all over the place. But that's the first episode. Uh, and as I was watching, I was picking up some little things I'd completely forgotten about. Like, the, um, when Barry first turns up to do the CSI thing, he does his all looking at evidence. Have you ever seen Sherlock? I have. I love There's, that you, show. You know the thing in Sherlock where he'll be looking at evidence and they'll, little like text will appear on screen explaining like what the evidence is? When he's looking at something, it'll say like, uh, gun wound from something millimeter bullets. Yeah, I think that's a really cool little plot device yeah. thing they have there going. They, they do it, they do it in Sherlock, and they do it in the first episode of The Flash when Barry's looking at tire traps and the thing pops up the screen, and then they never do it again. And I'm like, that's such a cool, why did you drop that? That's such a cool thing. Like, because it, it sort of emphasizes the fact that, oh, Barry, like, is good at other things other than running. He's a very good CSI. But they just, like, never bring that back. I think that's one thing that I really wish that they would have kept, although they do kind of keep going with the fact that Barry's a smart guy. I mean, his hmm. super speed does kind of extend into his mental powers too not that he has mental yeah. powers really but he's a smart guy so he can think even faster than he could before i mean it speeds up everything about him up to the point <laughs> where I, I might be spoiling a bit here because i don't remember if this is in the episode or not but he can't get drunk oh no i, I don't that's, that's not in the episode but yeah like he can't can't get drunk at one point in, in the episode um he breaks his arm and it's healed in like three hours like Everything about him sped up, and he was he was smart before he got the powers. <laughs> this, I have a um, note that just says science two question marks, uh, which is before the pilot accelerator explodes, because he just starts talking about physics, and I was just I didn't tune out. But I was sort of like just nodding. I was like, okay, Barry, you you carry on, my friend. Yep, that's science. I'm not even going <laughs> to pretend to understand that kind of science. It's completely over my head. But I mean, he sounded like he knew honest, what he was talking about. Most <laughs> most superhero things, when they bring up science, very rarely has basis in real science. It'll just be them 
using big words and going, yeah, that sounds slightly real. And we all just know it's not, but sort of nod and go, yeah, you know, we, we can't be asked to look up whether or not that's true or not. So we're just going to believe you. It's just part uh, of the fiction where there are some things you just accept as being yeah. real. Listen, this is this is a TV show where a guy gets struck by lightning and gets super speed. He can chat shit about physics if he wants. But there are there are so many like there's so many elements from the Flash that obviously are the, in the comics are recurring things like important side characters uh, and there are important side characters in the show and the fact that like some of the most important characters from the show just aren't in the comics is so weird to me like I, I'm fairly sure Joe just like either doesn't exist or doesn't have like, a relevant role um, in the comics which is so weird because he's such like in my head, Joe is such a important part of the Flash mythos. Like he's such an important part of Team Flash. And then even crazier to me is the fact that Harrison Wells, I'm fairly sure, is like a Flash TV show original character. Because like so much of the CW shows as a whole, like so much comes from Harrison Wells and his character is such an important one and him not being in the comics is insane to me. Like, I... I... I got a phrase about how much I love Harrison Wells. Specifically, well, I mean, this... Harrison Wells in this episode is, um... He's definitely a bit mysterious, but you know, he just has that energy. But yeah. Harrison Wells is somebody that you're really going to come to love, I think, as you watch the series. Come, come to love, come to hate, come to just a, like appreciate as a character concept as a whole. He's, he's great. I love, I love Harrison Wells. There's, there's not much we can say about him about getting into slightly spoilery territory, but so if people have not seen any of the Flash, uh, Harrison Wells is cool. Just need to know that. Um, yeah, I, I stopped watching the Flash. Uh, I think the last season I watched was season three. Um, but revisiting this definitely made me like realize. It made me remember why I like love the flash like it was for a long time one of my favorite shows um season one especially season one is fantastic television um it sort of starts dropping off in the later seasons i feel i don't know obviously i think are you up to date on it I'm pretty much up to date on it. I mean, okay. it does kind of fall off, and then it, I think it yeah. picks back up, and five and six okay. is looking really good right now. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I dropped off after season three just because it, it felt like it got stuck in a lot of repetition. Um, it was at the point where I'd, I'd be able to um, sort of guess what things were coming up. Um, but. I, it's it's strange how like some of those recurring things just some recurring things do happen in the first episode but some of them don't. Um, like I've noted down, they say run Barry run twice, um, which just becomes essentially the show catchphrase. Um, there's a there's the thing about the the lightning bolt choosing Barry. I think that comes back later. Oh, and of course, there's um there's Barry storming out of storming out of Star Labs, which you know becomes a recurring trend. Just people storming out of Star Labs. Yeah, 
And I really think yeah. using Weather Wizard here is a really good first enemy for Flash to go against. Um, I'm yeah. not all up on my Flash history, so I don't know yeah. like who his first enemy would be. But mm-hmm. it seems like Weather Wizard is also somebody who doesn't really have a hold of his powers. Probably I a little bit better than Barry I does, though. Using using someone who isn't a speedster is a very good idea because obviously like Barry the Flash as a whole has like a billion speedster enemies it seems like everyone is a speedster but like a big part of Barry's character um, is that he has he obviously has the Rose Gallery and I thought it was really good that um, they tapped into a like obviously Weather Wizard is a important part of the Rose Gallery in the comics. Like he is a villain that is known to be a Flash villain, but I'm, I feel like it's it was a good decision to not just go with an easy option and go right. I'm just gonna put Speedster villain in, have him face the Speedster, and like um, and choosing a not more interesting villain, but sort of like more. Um, I feel like one you could do more with. But the, the sequence where um, Barry untangles, um, like, runs round the hurricane margin creates in the opposite direction to, like, unhurricane it, I thought that was really just a really clever use of his powers. I don't know if it would work, but it was cool. That's more science. That's totally over my head there. Yes. But it's at least it's, like comic yeah, book yeah. science consistent, so we'll roll with it. Yeah, it's 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 pretty much the um Superman uh turning back the planets uh thing. But no, um Yeah, like I I really enjoyed um the first episode. I, I like I genuinely, uh, I forgot how much I loved the show as a whole. I thought it was just really exciting, and um, like fun. It just like that. That I think is the most uh, is the biggest word that I associate with just fun. Like, I kept on, like, I was just smiling the entire time watching it. It just, it was great. And there were just so many little moments that made me laugh. Um, like, at one point, um, I can't remember what he says, but Martin, Martin says something to Joe, and Joe just tells him to shut the hell up. I thought that was great. Um, I have somewhere else, Joe West equals legend. Um... Oh, when when Barry awakens from his coma, Cisco is just playing Poker Face by Lady Gaga. No reason why. Uh, he, he says Barry enjoys the song, but he's just playing it. And I, I thought that was hilarious. Um, there were just like so many little moments where I was just... I just remember why I love the characters. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, the entire first run, uh, the entire initial season, this is why we edit. What Flash starts out, it's it's just a whole lot of fun. It's a whole lot of taking themselves seriously in the right parts, but in the way where you're still going to have that smartass in the room who's being a smartass, and Mm. everybody knows that, so it's just going to happen. And not taking itself so seriously. I mean, you don't have any of the like weird relationship drama things going on that you have over on the Arrow side of things. I mean, I mean, there is some weird relationship drama. There is, but uh, it's not so blown up. It's like normal what you would expect in real life. Yeah. Well, I mean, Iris is dating. Iris is dating her father's detective partner and Barry who has been raised as like a brother to Iris 
is in love with her, which is odd, to say the least. Um, it yeah, is. Like, Later we learn that he's kind of been in love with her since well before yeah. that anyway, so it's not yeah. like he just falls in love with her when they're living in the same house. Yeah. It's just it's just a strange thing to um because obviously like they don't have that relationship in the comics. So it's a strange thing to have like in the in the meeting where we're like, okay, so we're making um a flash TV show, so um, Barry Allen, uh his main love interest, Iris West, genius. Okay, we're gonna have them, excellent. What if we make them sort of like adopted siblings? Yeah? Yeah, what do you what do you, what do you think? It's just like okay. But why? You you could not have done that. Um Whichever one of you has that dirty thought in your head, get it out right now because it does not apply here. It, oh, oh. It's just a strange decision to make. Um but it does introduce Joe West. So you know I can't hate it too much because Joe is incredible. Um but I, I was I was watching it, I was realizing there's um a lot of the um, sort of effects look like really good. Like um, less so when it's a close up of Barry's face and there's stuff moving in the background because that looks a bit green screeny. But like when there's just a sort of blur going through the streets, it looks great. Like it genuinely looks like a, a film. It's great. Um, so that was really fun to see, I just haven't watched The Flash in ages, so seeing the effects again, the, um, just, I, 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 I can never get enough of just shots of Barry going through the streets, it's great. And Cisco is another wonderful character. I mean, you've got to have your tech oh, person. I think that's... Cisco. Cisco's fantastic. He is... It's, he's... He's sort of... Not the, um... Like, audience stand-in, but he's... Very much, um... He's the... He's the comics nerd, like, in the show. Um, but he's just the nerd in the show. But it's, it's great, and he, he just makes stupid references that, like, coming from someone else would feel just, like, cheap and easy jokes. But coming from Cisco, it's like, you know what, Cisco? Go on, my man. I respect you. But I, I, do, I do find it funny that he just... Like, a, a whole load of sort of things that become, I guess, important in show later, just come from Cisco. Like, um, the lightning bolt, um, that obviously becomes the symbol of the Flash. Cisco just puts on some, like, puts on because it looks cool. And it's, it's just... There's, there's, there's Superman, which has the, you know, the, the, the S is the symbol of peace on my planet or something like that. Uh, and then there's just the Flash, which, yeah, my friend, uh, my friend thought lightning bolt would be cool, so, you know, just got one on. I mean, it does. He's not wrong. It does look cool, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's great. Um, although, um, I definitely prefer it later when they have the, um, the white the white background um, and the, the lightning bolt over it because I'm fairly sure that comes in later for some reason. I can't remember why. Um, and oh, the, um, the just sort of, not like, I was going to say Three Stooges, but not really like, but the, um, the chemistry between Cisco, Caitlin and Barry is just, it's fantastic. Like, it generally feels like their friends, and it's great. Um, like, less so for Caitlyn early on, because um, she has uh, a lot of issues, uh, especially early on in season one, that um, sort of, well, she has issues throughout the entire show, but, um, like, she definitely feels like 
Cisco's friend, and like she she sort of plays the straight man to Cisco in a fantastic way. Um, and even if she does like, there's there's one moment where Barry is it's when he's in this like hideous training costume, um, and Barry says something to Caitlin, like asking her what's wrong, and she just goes like, she just dumps everything on him. She just goes like, oh yeah, my um. My life is a failure, and my job, uh, you know, everyone hates me, my boss is in a wheelchair, my fiance is dead. And it's like, okay, he was just asking what was wrong, you didn't need to, you need to do that to this poor man. Um, but yeah, I love, like, a lot of the characters, they, they don't feel one note, um, which is good. Like, especially so early on, because obviously several shows, lots of shows can find it hard to develop, like, make three-dimensional characters um, early on. But for me, obviously you may, you may have felt different, but it definitely felt like most of the characters were kind of multi-dimensional. Um, like fairly early on, which is great. Yeah, I think out of all the Arrowverse CW shows, the only other one that has such good characters from the beginning is Legends of Tomorrow, and that's almost cheating because those characters already existed and then were just pulled into yeah. that show. Yeah, and the and the ones that didn't really have much of a sort of life outside Legends of Tomorrow. Um, other than Rip Hunter in Legend Tomorrow, um, fell a bit flat, like the, um, the Hawks. Um, but no, we're talking about Flash, not Legends. Uh, although I could talk about Legends for ages. Um, yeah, I was going to say something kind of um, uh, oh, um, saying that I didn't realise the first time I watched it, but, like, learning afterwards um, is that John Wesley Ship um, plays uh, Barry's father, Henry Allen, who spends a lot of his time being in jail uh, in the first season. Uh, and obviously he looks very um, handsome, handsome and rugged, uh, but he played, I think he played Barry in um, the 1990s. Uh, like 90s, uh, fast show, and so it's just cool to sort of have John Wesley Ship, um, be back in this role. Um, obviously, not the exact role, but like be back in this show, which was I, I just thought that was quite a nice little like nod to the past. It was great. I really love when shows are able to pull that kind of thing off. Just remembering yeah. the history that they have and that little nod to where, yeah, if I don't get it, it's not a big deal. Nobody cares. But if I do get it, oh, holy fuck, that's some cool shit. They do, they do a, um, a similar thing later on in, I think, season two? On season one or season two, where they have um, the trickster played by Mark Hamill, who I believe played him in the 1990 show. And I, they, they don't happen to be the exact, like, same trickster, but they do have the trickster, like, be played by the same person, which I thought was really, like, just fun. And, like, obviously I've never seen the 1990 show, um, so I can't appreciate it as much, but, like, knowing it, it's just cool. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Um, the last time I looked... <laughs> I could watch like the first episode on Prime and then had to pay per episode for the rest, and I was just not going to do that. Yeah, I think I think I, I I didn't dive any deeper when I saw the um the the costume because it doesn't look great. I will admit it's quite um it was quite muscle suit. Um, that that's something that um. That I was gonna say was on the um the flash the flash suit in um season one 
Uh, well, like, just in the show as a whole, I, I really like the Flash suit. It feels sort of grounded, but not too grounded, if that makes sense. Oh, perfectly. Like, it, it, it feels like it still is comic book nonsense, but you can sort of look at it and go, yeah, like, I could see someone making something similar to that in real life. And it just, it just looks cool, I think. Like, I don't know, whenever, whenever I see him in the suit, I'm, I just get excited because it looks very cool. <laughs> Although he does have the, um, he does, uh, have the gas mask in, um, because it, obviously, it was originally, in show, it was originally a, um, firefighters, it was a suit made for firefighters, um, the Cisco made, I think. And when he first appears in the suit, he's wearing this gas mask, and he pulls it off. But it was just, it was just so strange to see, like, because I completely forgot about it. Um, because he just sort of discards it and, like, never wears it again. But it was just so weird to just see him wear this gas mask, because I've gotten so used to how the, like, costume looks later on. Yeah, but it. The mm, the. <laughs> hey, editor for Super Sons, um, I'm sorry for all of my stumbling <laughs> over myself, but I love you. That you do some wonderful work. And if this stays in the episode, I don't know what I'll say, but I'll probably be very happy. <laughs> the entire first season of Flash, I think, is really something to where you can get a nice mm. general overview of the character. Again, this is coming from somebody who hasn't read a ton of Flash, but has done some quick research for some other things as I needed to for my own show. There's nothing in here that just screams to me, oh, you really have to go fucking unlearn this because it's wrong and horrible. I mean, obviously, yeah. there's going to be things they have to change for the TV show, but there's something you're going to have to change for every adaptation anyway. And one of the reasons I really like comics is just the fact that it is so adaptable and yes, this might not be how it was in the 40s or 50s or 60s when somebody was created, but eventually, if you wait long enough, whatever version of Flash you're seeing here is going to be the version in the comics. Yeah, of course. And like, I, I like how on. Um, like, it, it never feels too much like, oh, you need to read the comics to get this. Like, as, as you just said, you haven't read much Flash, and I haven't read much Flash either, but it, it doesn't feel like we're missing a lot by... Well, that, that sounds bad, but like it doesn't feel like things are going over our head for not reading it. Like, obviously, reading the comics would give us a deeper understanding of things, a deeper appreciation, but like it does feel like someone who's never read a comic in their life can just start watching The Flash and appreciate it. I think my favorite part here is that you don't get the origin story of everything just totally banged over your head in this mm -hmm. pilot episode. You get it spread out across the entire season, so you're Although, not having... Yeah. I did, I did note down that... Um, we see the we see the scene in which Nora Allen dies a lot just in this one episode. Like there are constant obviously it, it happens you see it in the beginning and then you see it um when he's training and then you see it when he storms out and you just see it a lot and it's it's like we get it, you know? She dies, and Barry's like, mm, my dad didn't kill her. Who did? Um, but, like, yeah, like, you don't have all these answers given to you straight away. Um, and you're not... You're not beaten over the head with everything, but I did, I did note that you see Nora's death a lot. And really, if that's the one thing we can kind of complain about, I think you're doing pretty good. Yeah, 
course. Like, I definitely... Like, I have I have some issues with later um, Flash episodes and seasons, but, like, as a whole, like, both as a pilot episode and as a adaptation of The Flash and just episode of television, I really enjoyed um, the pilot episode of The Flash. Like, I thought it was... It, it's able to sort of sum up The Flash quite well. Like, you can... You have him being speedy, and you sort of have um, a rogue, and like it just uh, I don't I don't I don't know where I was going with this, but like it just feels like it's the Flash, and I yeah I just I just really appreciate it as an episode of television. <laughs> Okay, do you have uh, do you have any uh, favorite moments? Any any things that stand out to you? It's like that was good. Honestly, I think my favorite that. moment is more of a because I know how things are coming. But I just mm. really like the Lady Gaga being played when Barry's <laughs> woken up. I think that yes. is a basically perfect summary of Cisco as a character. Yeah, like. It, it it really works like because it's the first time I, I'm fairly sure it's the first time we meet Cisco, and it really mar- works to just sort of straight away get who this character is. Like he's just playing Lady Gaga while looking after a guy in a coma. Um, it's just it's just a great moment to sort of emphasise who this person is. Um, yeah, I I think. I think my favourite moment, probably, probably it's it's the ending scene, um, and I can't elaborate too much why, but I think the scene in which Harrison Wells looks at the future newspaper, there's so much, like, you already have questions, but it just throws so many more questions at you, but not in a way that you're sort of left feeling like you don't know anything. You're, you're left thinking just what is going on but in a good way. And like the mystery of Harrison and how it develops over the course of that season is fantastic. And like I think that helped. Like it really helps to sell... Season 1 of The Flash. Like, I feel like Season 1 of The Flash benefits so much from um, Harrison Wells as a character's sort of dodgy dealings, um, one could say. Um, but yeah, I, I, loved, uh, I loved that scene just because of all the implications that come with it, and it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, that scene... It definitely makes you have more questions, but it doesn't make you feel like you missed anything. Yeah, and I think that second part is really what makes it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, anything, any, any other comments, or should we end it there? Well, obviously, I think everybody should go watch The Flash. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. There are going to be seasons where it's not as good. Okay, that's fine. And that happens in TV shows. What are you going to do? Hmm. I think I think I'm like having watched episode one again. I think I might try and push back, like get back into it. But I was just I just couldn't be bothered. It felt more like a chore to watch, uh, like it. But I I feel like this has sort of reinvigorated just my love for the show. So I might I might have a second have a second go through. You definitely should. It's it's one that. It's probably my second favorite Arrowverse show. What's your first? Legends. Legends, of course. Legends is fantastic. But yeah, brilliant. Um, okay, so 
What? You want to find you? Well, if you want to hear more from me, you can head on over to playcomics.com and check out Play Comics, where you can see that intersection of comics and video games. Or you can head on over to Twitter at Play Comics Cast. Those are probably the easiest places to go find me, and I am always very happy to interact with fans or people who just want to call me dumb because I miss things. Because that, I mean, honestly, it's the internet. That the best way to learn something is to throw some wrong information out there. Uh, okay, I do not have a podcast uh, or anything yet. Um, yet, uh, but you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, at Mortal Finlay One, which is Mortal and then F I N Lay One, um, where I mostly shit post and cry. But yeah, brilliant. I mean, that's um, basically Twitter in a nutshell, so we're good yeah, to go. It is, it is most Twitter in a nutshell. But yeah, brilliant. So um, thank you for listening, Chris. Uh, thank you for helping me do this first episode of a podcast I've been on. Well, hopefully it, the addiction kicks in and oh, you well, find something it. else. <laughs> Brilliant. And if you want to find Dan and Jake, you're going to have to figure out what prison they're being held in because they're not I letting think me know. Arkham? I think they're in Arkham. I don't know. They may be moved. They probably are going to be moved because those criminal masterminds, I mean, they're just... They're going Arkham, to take Arkham over gets Arkham. Broken. Arkham gets broken out of every two weeks. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not safe to keep them in there. <laughs> but uh, I think you can follow Super Sons. Is it at Super Sons Pod on Twitter? It is at DC Super Sons. DC Super Sons. Let me make sure because I have Twitter open anyway. Yes, Excellent. it is at DC Super Sons on Twitter. They are a wonderful follow as well. I would tell you that they're a wonderful show, but you obviously know that already since you're listening to us here. Yes. So follow them. I didn't know the right Twitter. Chris does. I'm dumb. But yes, follow them. uh, And thank you for listening.